Deb, great to see you. You know, the last time I saw news on F3 was uh, back in February, putting together a land purchase, I think it was, near your Patterson Lake North. Uh, tell me about that deal first. Well, my technical team uh, that I have a lot of respect for, the same team that's made three discoveries, came to me and said, um, we've got land uh, that's being sandwiched by Can Alaska, and they've got land that's stuck between our, our property. We wanted that whole block straight down um, past and triple R's here. We just wanted that whole chunk of land and it was there. So we just did a swap. Um, we're going to be doing some work on that property um, this this uh, summer, but we just wanted a complete control of that whole basin. And obviously, you know, the recent news with Paladin and stuff shows how valuable that part of the world is, that the Athabasca is the place to be, but um, in all the world because of grade and politics. And politics, obviously, as you see, it becomes more and more important. Um, but you want the west side of the basin is where the action is. Um, you know, whether it's Arrow, which is, you know, the biggest uh, high-grade, high undeveloped asset uh, next to it is Triple R. And so that we want to, you know, uh, we want to be in the right uh, location as, as they would say. And then, so we just did a swap with, with our friends over there, uh, Can Alaska, and it's been, been fantastic. Okay. So then the highlight, if you will, or the work that was done in 2023 was your airborne EM and your, and your ground EM and so on. But I guess I want to find out what happened over the winter. Talk to me about the winter drill program sure. and how you did well, it. Yeah. Well, I, we just announced, uh, uh, last week or a couple weeks ago, We've hit another high, you know, we hit another big, beautiful hole in the JR zone. Uh, the JR zone sits on the A1 conductor at the very top. And um, what we've been trying to do is go down there and test what's along A1. As you know, urine deposits tend to be like pearls on a necklace. Uh, if you look at triple R, that's what it is. It's just, you know, blobs of uranium on a line. Whereas, and we've also another conductor that's kind of parallel, but it's got some you know, kinks to it, uh, B1. So over the winter, we've been investigating uh, what goes down at on A1 and B1, um, but also with A1. So that's been our winter program. You know, right now, it's a beautiful, beautiful zone. The JR zone is unbelievable, the high grade. More importantly, um, you know, it, when it comes, I, and I'm biased, obviously, but JR zone is easy, the best exploration project in the basin if grade and depth matter. Meaning like there are other projects that are further down 800 meters. We're at about 200, it starts at 150, but the uranium starts kicking around 200. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got that and we're averaging over two and a half percent. We had, you know, grades up to 60%, you know, half meter uh, chunks. So it's a great area, but we know we're trying to prove to the investment world that it's a system, not uh, you know one trick pony. And so we're, we feel uh, you know the boron, the mineralization, the chemistry. You know there are certain boxes we try to tick. You know when we you know uranium drilling is very expensive in the Athabasca, so we try to you know like you say do airborne um, and various other techniques to narrow down or vector in. And but you got to tick certain boxes. It's got to be graphitic conductor. It's got to have this. Anyways, it's in our presentation. But our goal has been trying to find another pod, right? And that's what we're learning. And we we you know people say you're missing. I say we're learning. What we've learned since uh, going back to 2010, when we discovered the J zone, then the triple R, and now this is that you're always learning. You know, you can't really learn what's underground. You can do airborne, you can do lots of it until you drill and you get down there and you see what's actually there. You know, um, that's when you find out. So that's what we've been doing all winter is trying to learn about the system. And then th and that will get us to the point of making another discovery. OK, but there were 15 drill holes, I think, in the winter program. What, what do you do? Do you expand far the number more, in the summertime then? No, no, no. There's more than 15. I'll get you oh. an exact number, but I more like 50. Um, oh. um, and uh, no, we've been we have been nonstop drilling um, since 
uh, last fall. Other than that Christmas time to give people a Christmas break, we drill pretty well all year long. And then you get a break in April when it's it's the snow is melting and you get these big uh, mud. And if you if you work there, you have these big mud holes, and then it'll hurt your. Then you have to you know you have to get out of there for a couple of spring break up. Um, but we've been drilling constantly. Um, we raised another ten million here. Um, closed uh, about three weeks ago. So we got another 10 million that will take us through the year and will methodically sell, sorry, m m methodically drill. So uh, no, we've done a lot of drilling. I'll get you the exact number because to us, there's no winter, there is no summer. It's just keep drilling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Denison made a big uh, cash infusion to your company. Is that the $10 million re you're referencing? No, $10 million in private placement we just did. $15 okay. million was done last fall. Um, uh, they put in a debenture of $15 million um, with a debenture, and it works out to about 6 7% of the company. That was done before. That was hard money. And we have $25 million hard, 10 soft, and... Um, Part of that money came from Denison, which was and it was a nice premium. You know, the stock was in the forties; they do it in the fifties. Uh, I'm a big fan of Denison. Um, you know, obviously the Lundin family has been behind that for some time, and David Case has done an excellent job of steering it towards ISR. And you know, they've got themselves a niche. Um, so yeah, they're great people. Uh, talk to me about timeline then. If you continue to drill. Uh, in your experience, how long does it take before that's a mine, number one? And number two, yes. do you invite Denison in to do that? Right. Well, I, that really depends on your results, really. It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. you have to have, um, in my opinion, you've got to have about 40 to 50 million pounds before you can say, okay, well, that's worth uh, building a mine around. You know, analysts out there say we got 20 to 25. So we have to get to 50 million pounds in that area before uh, we can say, okay, we've got something there uh, like ISO in about 50 million pounds. Clough Lake was 48 million pounds. Um, so Hathor would have been around 60 million pounds. Um, it, it, you're not going to find, you know, that used to be the standard until you know, Triple R came along at 150 million pounds. Uh, and then Arrow comes along, blows that out of the water, you know, 400, 500 million. So, and they got another new zone, uh, Next Gen does. So it's not a question of timing. It's a question of results. If you don't have enough pounds at the right grade, at the right depth, you know, by that point, um, and by that point, you'll get bought. We won't, um, if most of the time, uh, exploration companies don't get that opportunity and nor should they because that's not their expertise. That's what makes this recent announcement of Paladin so exciting is that Paladin has is putting a mine that has gone into production before and is putting another and will have the expertise that maybe that people at FCU didn't completely have. They got some good people there with Gary and Ross. Um, but you know Paladin brings a whole team in. So you know, eventually, mining companies for a long time have advocated drilling exploration. They goes back to the you know the eighties where they said, "No, we're not going to explore anymore." Hardly, they do some. I mean, Orano and Chemical have obviously done some here next to the ISO project, and were successful. But most of the time, here, you exploration companies go find the uranium. When you find it, we'll buy it. This way, we have no risk. Um, so it's not a question of when; it's a question of results that you have to have so many pounds at a certain grade and then well example you know the, the takeover we're just seeing right now you know nobody expected i don't think really fcu to put that in production um i didn't i was the ceo and founder of the company uh, we always knew we find it move it along far as you can and until somebody has belief that you've got a mind they buy you yeah, exactly. Well, we wish you continued success then with F3. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're very excited. You know, in real estate, it's about location, location. And junior exploration company is management, management. Ray, Sam, and previously Ross, they found J-Zone, sold to Denison. Now you got Triple R, sold to Paladin. And now the third discovery is JR. So you got $35 million in the bank. We're in the Athabasca. The discovery is high grade, 
close to the surface, and you've got Ray and Sam leading the team. And that's the key points. And I would love for someone to find me another exploration project in the world that's anything like that, and we'll go buy it. Um, so there's a lot of reasons for investors. Good. Dev, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much.